to my channel again for those who are back. This is another beginner orientated video. Uh, my top 10 little niggles that go wrong at the beginning and if you don't fix them near the beginning they're really tough to fix later on. So the first one I'm going to talk about is breathing. <clears throat> Sorry excuse me I've got a little bit of a cold. It's snowing here in London at the moment. Um, so breathing. Uh, <clears throat> if you get into the habit of breathing through your nose that's a really tough one to crack because once you've started it's really hard to crack. Um, unfortunately you just don't get the right kind of breath control from there. So although the saxophone works, you're never gonna get long phrases. It's gonna cause problems later on in your practice. Um, the other one is puffing cheeks when you play. That means you're not taking the air to the diaphragm and you're probably not supporting at all and the sound is gonna be really crass, and not, not what we're after. So if you haven't already watched my video on how to make a sound out of the sax and my top 10 uh, tips for great tone, I would recommend those two. I'll put links to those in the description box. Let me read that. Okay, this is one that I have to argue with my pupils with quite a lot and bully from the beginning. Articulation, that's the tonguing. So instead of we want we want tonguing on every single one. So um, some people get it straight away, sorted. Some people take a little bit longer. It's a funny coordination thing. If you don't get it straight away, please, please, please persevere. Um, if if you get to sort of grade three standard and you're not tonguing your notes, it just sounds very amateurish and you're going to find that you're not going to be able to play staccato or quick passages um, by foofing every single note like that. I call it foofing. It's like kind of a foot instead of a tuh. So address articulation right from the beginning and persevere if it's not something that comes very instinctively to you. Again, I have a video on articulation. Um, if it's something you've watched before, maybe revise it. It's always worth a watch, so check that one out. It's in the little eye up there. Number three, read quality. Um, a lot of shops or online when you buy your sacks, they'll give you a few reads they'll always give you some nasty cheap ones. It's very unusual that they throw in decent reads. And actually that's not doing you any favors from the get go. So make sure you're using a decent read brand. Most beginners start on one and a half. Um, if you're a big strong person, you might wanna go straight in with a two. So the idea is that the thicker the read, the more kind of woody and nice the sound. Whereas when they're really thin, they can be a bit brassy and they're quite difficult to control and keep in tune. So you do want to get onto a thicker read as soon as you feel capable, but you've got to develop those muscles in your mouth first. I would recommend Vandering or Rico Royal or OK. Um, but for beginners, Vandering. Probably just Vandering Traditional. It's a dark blue box. I'll put links to that in the description box as well. Number four, uh, reeds chipping. So um, <clears throat> I'm so used to having sax. It's like an extra limb. I can chuck it around and I'm not gonna hit it on anything. Um, but when people first begin, they, they're a bit cat handed with it. And this happens a lot. Get sort of caught on your clothing. You hear that noise? Not the banging downstairs. Still got works going on downstairs. It's like the everlasting development of the downstairs flat. Um, <clears throat> right, so chips in your read mean you're going to get squeaks and things like that. Um, just be aware of where your read is at all times. This getting caught on your clothes is going to cause chips. And then it's just a waste of money. You've got to throw it away and start a new one. Because as soon as it's got a chip in, the sound is... Okay, speaking of reads, number five, the alignment of your read. So at, actually at the moment, mine is slightly disaligned. Now that's gonna encourage things like squeaking, split notes. Make sure you're perfectly aligned. So I call it flush, completely straight down the mouthpiece. And also that you're not too or low, uh, too or low on the actual mouthpiece itself. So you shouldn't be able to see your read over the top when you look at it front on. But similarly, on the other side, you don't want it low enough that you can see quite a bit of black on the top of there either. So that perfect alignment is how you're gonna get a great sound and it's worth getting right from the beginning because then it's very instinctive. It's like tying your shoelaces. You don't even have to think about it once you've practiced it a few times. Uh, next up, while I'm in this zone, number six, we're gonna talk about the ligature. So um, something my pupils often don't think what makes a difference is if you have the ligature a bit high up here or vice versa even too low so they've loosened the screw too much pushed it down and it's right down here um 
It's all about holding your reed in the perfect position so that it can vibrate to the optimum level. Um, this is a Vandering Optimum ligature, haha. <laughs> um, you want it to be exactly in that barrel bit, not over and not over on either side, exactly in the middle. Um, and then the screws, if you've got a metal one, the screws can either go on the bottom or the top. This is uh, designed to be on the bottom, this particular ligature. If you like this one, I mean, it is expensive, but I'll put a link to it in the description box in case you're like, ooh, I, I, I like the look of that one, that looked easy. They can be a little bit fiddly, the ones that come with beginner saxophones. Okay, what are we on to? Um, is it number six yet? Number seven? Let's say seven. Six? Six! <laughs> Oh well, I'll number these on the screen. Um, okay, so um, <clears throat> being a bit stubborn about which B flat you use. So uh, there are two, and right from really early on, it's worth learning both of them. So, well, there's, there's more than two. There's about four different fingers you can use for B flat, but there's two main ones. There's your bis key, this is called, or your side key. Now, I've done a video on different B flats, and I really, really advise that if you only use one type of B flat, you watch that video, which is popping up in the eye just now, make sure you check that one out and get familiar with both of those. It's for the purpose of moving quickly between like a B and a B flat, or if you're arpeggiating, you might want to stick with this one. You basically, you want both options. Don't um, sell yourself short by only having one. It doesn't take that long to adjust and learn the other one as your second option. Um, what have we got next? Okay, a definite pitfall from the beginning. I think if you really intend to learn this instrument and keep it going and make some serious progress, you need routine in your practice. Don't just think, oh, I'll pick it up when I feel like it. You've got to schedule when you're going to pick it up. And I know it's supposed to be a pleasure and it's a hobby, but I kind of associate it with sports. It, I do a lot of running. And if I don't put those kind of four runs in the diary and they move, I'm freelance, I'm all over the place. You know, I might be abroad even, and it might be that I'm away for a few days and I can't really fit in the running and then I have to do a few days in a row. But whatever happens, for years now, I have run four days a week and that included Christmas. <laughs> um, and I just put them in the diary and they have to happen and I might have to move them as the week turns around, but it happens. So make sure you do schedule when you're gonna practice and think about when you're gonna practice so it's not just, you know, two hours at the weekend and then nothing for two weeks because you'll find you just don't progress and then you'll get frustrated. I think we're on number eight. Eight, um, <laughs> we'll go with eight. Damaging these keys here. Be careful when you put your saxophone down. Uh, the main one I would say is just, just to have a, a sax stand. This is the K&M one, which I love because it folds up and goes in the bell of the saxophone, so I can't ever forget it. Not that I'm forgetful or flaky. Um, if you can't be bothered to buy a sax stand or you're just trying out the sax for a bit, you don't want to invest too much, I would recommend you put it down on this side. So you put it down this way up. So that all of these sticky out keys are facing upwards, not being squashed against the floor. If this bends, it actually changes the whole alignment of everything joined to that. So just be really careful about these levers sticking out on this side of your saxophone when you put your saxophone down. We're down to the last couple. We said about practice routine. Uh, we said about that. Oh God, I put something down twice, I think. Uh, maybe we're on number 10 by now. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry if I'm not matching up. Hopefully the numbers on the screen are matching and we have 10. Last one I'm going to have is, this sounds really patronizing, but for the love of God, clean your saxophone. The amount of beginners that just think it's okay to put it straight away in the box again, and they've got all this sort of congealed saliva down the mouthpiece and the neck joint, and even worse, I mean, this is, your reader's wood. Wood rots, it will rot. So just every time you play, it takes a moment. I just don't understand why you wouldn't do it. Uh, get a pull through cloth. I'll put a link in the description box to an Amazon one. Um, and just even if you just have time to do the neck joint, the body doesn't matter so much because it's a bit bigger and it does dry out. But whoosh, whiz it through the neck joint and the mouthpiece. Make sure your reeds had a wipe and then you're good to go the next time you play and you're not getting bacteria all in your instrument. Sorry if that was really patronising, you're a very lovely hygienic person, but it is genuinely something that I come across really regularly as a problem with beginners in particular. So let's get into the right habits from the beginning, guys. 
Hope that was useful for you. Those are my top tips for you guys out there. If it was, for goodness sake, give me a thumbs up. It makes me so happy when I get a thumbs up and it makes these videos worthwhile. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel and you're checking out some of my videos and you think that they might be useful for you, do join the team and subscribe. We'd love to have you on Team Saxophone Antics. Uh, if you're interested in where I am, I often mention my playing and maybe you want to know more about me. I am on Twitter and I'm on Instagram and I post there pretty regularly. So hopefully you can follow me on those. See you next time.